Welcome back, my friends. It is December 26, 2018, the day after Christmas. Caroline and I obviously wish you all the best. We hope everything went well for you guys. We hope everyone got all the things they wanted, got to see family, uh, didn't get stuck in this uh, winter storm that we are going to talk about uh, a little bit later. But uh, this story, I think, is very interesting. Caroline is 100% responsible for this one, so thank her for this. This is just incredible. I don't know how I didn't see this. Uh, but apparently, it's not only important to um, us here on YouTube as we study and talk about these things, but this is a very uh, special event going on for scientists, especially astronomers, and we're going to talk about why. All right, on June 30th, 1908, an object the size of an apartment building came hurtling out of the sky and exploded in the atmosphere above Siberia. The Tunguska event, named for a river, flattened trees for 800 square miles. It occurred in one of the least populated places in Asia. That's a good thing because to this day, there is uh, still no recorded deaths associated with this. Uh, but nonetheless, still considered the uh, biggest and largest impact event in recorded history as far as celestial events um, on Earth here. So... Uh, with that said, I'm going to continue here. Now, since this actual event took place on June 30th, 1908, uh, just the date alone, I mean, obviously you can understand uh, pictures were probably pretty scarce around that time. In fact, more times than none, the only pictures you really get from this event are uh, the aftermath pictures of the way the trees fell and th that section of forest that was wiped out. Uh, this actually, this expedition here was in 1927, so... A good 19 years after the event itself, this picture was taken with the tree still laying down. And what happened over time is they were able to, or at least they're trying to, use the trees, which you can see here. I kind of uh, cropped this one and, and pulled some color out of it so we can see it a little better. Again, these are 1900s pictures. But uh, long story short, guys, is they're using the direction of the trees and the direction they fell to try to get an idea of where and what direction this explosion or whatever happened above the sky in Siberia took place. And the interesting part about all this is how it connects to this June meteor shower that we are going to be experiencing uh, this coming summer. So what I want to do is I want to read a couple other things to you. I know the reading can get boring sometimes, but it is vital to this uh, video. Now listen to this. Here we go. So, meteor shower called the Torrids occur twice each year, in June and in late October or early November. The latter event occurs at night, resulting in visible shooting stars. The June shower, in which the meteors are called Beta Torrids, happen during the day. That's what we're going to experience in 2019 and what we experienced in 1908 over Siberia. And while it may not make for spectacular visuals, the June 2019 Beta Torrid could still yield some significant observations. And by that, they mean they're looking for large objects. They're looking for anything that may be a similarity to what caused that 1908 Siberian explosion. And they are, they are saying that the possibilities are always higher when, the, when we pass through these meteor showers. But especially this year, based on how dense this cluster is that we're going through, it's very, very similar to the one that they think was around during 1908. So they're kind of giving you the idea that this is definitely one to look out for. They're not making any guarantees that we should expect anything like that. They said that event happens about once every 300 years when you get those airborne explosions. But we also do get land hits, like uh, pretty major ones. There's one actually in Arizona... Uh, that happened about 50,000 years ago. A very, very famous crater in the ground. Um, it's as clear as crystal that it was something that came out of the sky and just struck right into the earth. I will show you a picture of that shortly, but uh, I want to finish reading this article for you first. And we're also going to see how this article directly links to um, that Siberian event. So here we go. Um, that's because the earth will be passing near the densest cluster of material from the torrid stream. Uh, this is a report from the Washington Post. Uh, so basically what they're saying is that we are passing through an area of this meteor storm, especially in June, that is going to put us um, 
more at risk than in past years. So it's been a long time since we've actually passed through this meteor shower um, in this part particular area, this dense area where there's much more material in space where they can hit each other and cause effects on Earth. There could be more uh, visuals in the sky uh, for certain areas of the Earth, things of that nature. But here is the relation to uh, the Tunguska event, which we have just been talking about in Siberia. So if the Tunguska object was a member of the Beta Taurid uh, stream, which is what we are going through in June, this coming June, then the last week of June 2019 will be the next occasion with a high probability for a Tunguska-like collision or near misses. They said this in the presentation. The pair said, this is the pair of scientists that are doing this study, uh, said they were not predicting another Tunguska airburst, but added that the increase in small near-Earth objects increases the probability of such an event. That goes without saying, if you're passing through a more dense area of a meteor shower, obviously the chances of being either hit by one or seeing more goes up. Nonetheless, per the post, the probability is still very low because space is so big. No one is saying that June should be declared a National Wear a Helmet Month. Uh, I guess they were trying to joke around and keep people, you know, off the edges of their seat. But um, basically they're saying that the conditions now are, are very, very, very similar to the ones we experienced then. Now, for other notable meteors that we have seen um, in the past couple years even, this was 2013 in Russia. I'm sure a lot of you know about this one. This was about two hours after this meteor that uh, destroyed over 700 buildings, injured people, uh, blew out windows and buildings. Uh, many, many dash cams in Russia recorded this. In fact, here is a quick one here. I will just uh, kind of screen cap through, but you could see up in this top left corner, this dash cam caught it uh, as it was coming in, and you could see in the beginning there's nothing there, nothing, nothing, but as you move forward, you see this light begin to streak in from the left part of the screen here, and it gets across the sky and explodes about right in this area, and this was such a huge deal when this happened in 2013. I remember I was actually um, working on another channel at the time. Uh, which uh, does not longer exist uh, for many reasons. We could talk about that another day. But um, yes, this was a huge deal in Russia. This was another airborne explosion. So this took place um, in the sky above Russia and still caused all that damage. This was much weaker, apparently, than the one in Siberia. But just to show you that these things are possible, not just in the early 1900s, but today or any day because they actually came out and admitted that they had no clue where this thing was or where it came from because apparently it came from the direction of the sun and the equipment we had up in space at the time could not detect it and it came out of nowhere took everyone by surprise at least that is what they are saying happened so um again there's plenty of video and info and pictures of what this did in modern russia right now um, this was a big deal. So with that said, let's move on and finish this up for you guys. In fact, there's actually a Wikipedia page uh, linked to this Russian meteor that I just showed you. You can see this is clearly a screenshot from the video I just had shown you. Uh, so this is not even going to try to pronounce it, but it's that meteor. Uh, this is the one over Russia. You can see the picture here. It shows you where in Russia it was. And if you notice, uh, this one happened here. The 1908 one was around this area over here. So it's pretty interesting that um, this one was in February, obviously, but the one that happened in Siberia uh, was in June. So this was a total separate event, which is also why they claim they were caught off guard by it. Um, whether you want to believe that or not is totally up to you. But for those of you that want to check out the Wikipedia page on this particular meteor, here it is. You just search it, and boom, it's the first thing that pops right up for you. All right, so to close this out, guys, um, June is definitely something we are going to be looking forward to. And hopefully by the time we get to June, uh, we can actually see the sky or the sun. I can't remember the last time I even saw the sun based on uh, our work schedule and, and the weather we've been having. But... Um, 
This is definitely something for the astronomers out there, including myself, and I know a lot of my subs are into this stuff. This is going to be fun. Uh, hopefully it's clear enough in June. Uh, some equipment will be able to pick up some of these meteors during the middle of the day. That does not mean you're not going to be able to see them or anything like that. Some of the bigger ones you can definitely see. Um, if you have certain types of cameras, you could set them up, and then post-production, uh, you can really bring out the light and, and catch some stuff that you may not have seen with your naked eye at that time. So make sure to go back and check your videos and, and do different settings and stuff to bring out different lights and things like that so you can see these things because they will be there. There's no doubt about it, especially being that we're passing through one of the densest parts of this torrid meteor shower, uh, again, which comes twice a year uh, once in June and then once in October slash November give or take um, here are those trees again this was the Siberian situation and then last but not least I just wanted to show you that um, these do come close to home guys this is Arizona right here this was about 50,000 years ago a meteor uh, which they believe was a uh, asteroid or a comet at first entered the atmosphere then became a meteor and then was big enough to not be burnt up by the atmosphere and was still large enough to make it to Earth and then smash into Earth, creating this this uh, giant crater. You could see all the different numbers here. Uh, here's the 50,000 years. That's how old they believe it is. Um, so we do have direct impacts. It's been a long time since we've had one that um, has you know made news to the point where it's caused destruction or anything of that nature, but... Um, how long will it be until the next one comes? So this isn't a I'm trying to scare you video. It's a video that shows that there is a very significant meteor shower on its way that we really, really should pay attention to based on the fact that it's going to be a little closer than in past years. So, And then there's a second look at this uh, Arizona crater, which they've, they've actually been building little sightseeing tours and uh, stuff around this to um, make it sort of like a, uh, a museum area, if you want to call it that, or, you know, just make it a fun tourist attraction. I guess that's what they try to do now. So, all right, guys, I think that's all I got for you as far as this one goes. Now, I check out meteors a lot, and a very popular site here is uh, Solar System Scope. You can use a web browser to check this out. And you can actually go backwards in time. You can go forwards in time. I actually have a video posted about a very, very significant planet alignment on um, uh, 4th of July 2020, which is coming up very soon. Uh, we have a crazy planet alignment. But um, a lot of times I record these things. And this was one I did last year. Now, this is a sun cam where you can record outside meteors. Now, these are things that pass between the Earth and the sun. And if you hit play here, you could see uh, you catch streaks and stuff like that. And if you play it slowly and you scroll through slowly and you look for things, uh, sometimes you catch little objects right there. There you go. That would be considered a meteor. You could see it in the negative here, too. And these are frames. It's not a constant video, so that's why you're not seeing it moving as you would see the stars move. If I scroll forward, you could see the stars are stationary. And then right in the left part of the screen here, this is um, actually, I believe at the time it was Mercury moving in from left to right. And you can tell that it's a planet because the stars are catching up to it. The planets are closer to the sun. They're orbiting the sun. The stars are way out farther, so it takes them a lot longer to cross this path here. So you could tell that this is a planet just based on the fact that this star catches up to it over time. So if I back up here, you can see the distance between this star and the planet here. And then as I move forward, you can see that star will eventually pass the planet because the planet is much closer to the sun. The sun is this ring here, and then there's an actual arm. You can see the arm here. This is an actual piece of equipment that sticks out of the camera itself. Here is the lens we are looking through, and it actually holds a physical disc in front of the sun, and this is used to block out the bright rays of the sun. You can see some of the rays sticking out from this blue circle. So keep in mind, this is the size of the sun, this white ring. But this disc is used to keep the brightness away so we can see what's going on around it. So, ladies and gentlemen, will we see another event like we saw in Siberia or in Russia based on this close approaching meteor shower? Or will it be just another one of those hype machines? Um, 
your guess is as good as mine, but this is certainly worth posting. So once again, Caroline, my love, thank you so much. Uh, you do so much for this channel. You have no idea. I know I tell you, and I know I tell all the subs, and it, you know, you guys can think what you want, but this girl is on point, and um, trust me, she's going to have her own channel soon, and we're both going to be uh, taking the world by storm, to say the least. So, with that said, guys, I seriously appreciate every single one of you. I know Caroline does, too. And just a friendly reminder, uh, please, uh, if you enjoy the content, give us a like, uh, give us a comment if you have any questions. And also, I've been getting a lot of emails and uh, messages about people being unsubbed from the channel. Yes, it's been happening to a lot of channels. All I can say is to um, check daily to make sure you're still subbed to us and make sure, click that bell icon um, underneath each video or on the channel info page itself and that allows you to get our notifications um, we are also on Instagram and Twitter both of those links are in the info box uh, so that's all available to you guys so uh, once again we appreciate you guys thank you for listening we're gonna be back with that weather update huge huge winter storm going on in the uh, the Midwest right now uh, just making its way over the Great Lakes, so it, it is a mess out there. Over a foot of snow, some areas getting 18 inches, so uh, that will be our next story. Uh, thanks again, guys. Have a great night, and I hope you had a great Christmas. Take care. Bye-bye.